Annabelle's going to show a few tools of the trade now. The first is a slider, and this is a siliconized piece of plastic that you attach to the um, surface of your table and around your um, sewing machine. And you'll note that there's a hole in the center. There are a couple versions here in the next slide, and one has um, a, a thicker plastic surface than the other, but basically it's the same idea. The next tool of the trade she's going to show is uh, Golden Threads Quilting Paper. Now this is the paper that she's going to demonstrate uh, using as a stencil to quilt blocks in a quilt, one of her art quilts here. Show how you can make different shapes. So what Annabelle's doing here is, this is a bendable ruler. Um, architects and uh, engineers use these kinds of things sometimes. And if you want to hold it on its side so we can see that there are, um, are markation, demarcations on it. Yep, inches on one side and I believe metric on the other. Yep. And if you were quilting around something something like my labyrinth quilt and you wanted to curve a letter, uh, curve a word, you could take this and you could use your little wooden dowel and just indent the, um, the curve that you want and then that will give you something to work towards and work on. Okay, so these are Annabelle's paints and if you want to explain what they are again, these are from the shop called Artistic Artifacts, and it's liquid textile paint. So I use um, a paper plate and small quantities of paint, and I blend them together until I get the color that I want. And I use the actual fabric, a sample of the fabric that I'm working on, so that I can be sure I like the look of the, of the project. So um, Annabelle was explaining in the break that she can mix most any color she wants from this set of basic colors, but you can also buy other colors. So if, if I were to want to mix something that's going to fit right there, if, I've made, uh, if I want to paint something on this fabric, I would be able to make that by putting some of this together with maybe a teeny, teeny bit of that and some white. So I would play with it until I got the color just the way I wanted it to match. So in other words, these three colors, the um, I'll get these out of the way, these three colors, the blue, the raspberry, and the white, um, when mixed, would give you an area of color very similar to what's already on the fabric. Yes. So my very first quilting book was Machine Quilting with Harriet Hargrave. And I was lucky enough to um, be on a quilting retreat. You have such fun at quilting retreats. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> we all, we all had, had a $5 limit. We could go to the five and dime and get something and make a hat. But she has tons of great ideas about grids and lines and how to make them. And this was before rulers were common. She was using stencils. Lots and lots of information. And I believe we have the books in our guild library. So I'm going to demonstrate how to baste a quilt the way she does with the table and these, these fat chunky clips and how you lay it out these are notebook clips. Okay. Big ones, really yeah. big ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then she has all kinds of information on making feathers. Oops, sorry. Slower. Okay. Straight and curved and meandering and continuous. And lots of practice ideas. So here you are starting, and then you go around and you stop and pause, and then you come around and pause, come around and pause, and come around and pause. 
so she gives very good clear directions and the sequence the number sequence and this is a double stitched feather mm -hmm. okay <laughs> Libby Lehman is well known. Libby Lehman is well known for her beautiful um, iridescent see-through quilting, and I did take a class from her, and we practiced on this plasticky sheet, trying to make one of her beautiful threaded curves, ribbon illusions. And if anyone would like to borrow this, I would be happy to loan it to them. Thread and Play by Libby Lehman. Yes. And again, I think that the Guild owns one of these, too. Then there's uh, someone named Karen McTavish, who has a book about, it's called McTavishing, and she is the one who's done a lot of highlighting of these little um, designs and swirls. You can see what's shown on this one around an applique project. She has white on white work which is is just really stunning and you look at the lines out here in the border that's the kind of quilting that she does. And then you can have a book like this that has more variety of um, designs, and, and I just love what's in the back of this book. So we have, we have pumpkins and peppers and, and celery and more, scallions and onions, artichoke, beets. And she talks about doing a double line sometimes when you have a wavy line what your quilting is going to look better see a single scallion and then she puts a double line around it a single green pepper and then puts a double line around it and again she does more here and this is um, has a lot of flowers in it lots of different flower holly leaves just now, how would you translate that, Annabelle, to your own quilt? Let's say you want to put tomatoes on it, since we got tomatoes on the right-hand side. Well, I would take, and I would first of all practice a tomato and um, see if I liked it better with the single line or the double line, and then come down and practice you know, two together with a leaf. So this book is not meant, it's meant to give you ideas about how to do it, not to use as any kind of a template, per se? You could definitely trace this. You could use the same yellow mm -hmm. paper that I used on the stencil mm -hmm. and trace it onto the yellow paper and then quilt over that and tear it away mm -hmm. because that's paper specially made for tearing away. Cool. But when you've done as much quilting as you have free motion, you, you probably can just imitate some of these designs, too. And so can you, as you <coughs> practice more and more. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm not there yet. <laughs> but, but here's your iris, which you love, yes. and there's, there's the fabric inspiration, mm -hmm. and the single line, and then the double line, and a mariposa. I mean, there are so many varieties of flowers to do. So, show me how to create... Kathy Sandback. And then I'm in a minute I'm going to go get our our um, book that is our class textbook. Recommended this text. This recommended text, Valerie Wells, and she did come to the guild several years ago, and she has quilting solutions for each project that she is presenting painted grass and you learn and I love her imagery and her richness of colors showing her inspiration so she's done the cutting and the assembly 
and then she gives you a quilting idea on how to make it very fluid and make these little grasses. So one of the favorite comments by some of several of our professional long armors in the guild is when you have straight blocks on a quilt, you should quilt something curved around or in them because yes. you don't want to do squares and rectangles on top of a black uh, square and rectangle block. Exactly. I'm coming right back. So this is an example. I'm just going to show a close-up of this. You've got square blocks and then you've got a number of circular um, uh, branches and leaves on top of the square blocks, which is just elegant. Okay, cool. So that was Valerie Wells' book. And here is our wonderful textbook, Free Motion Quilting, Jenny Lyon. And I chose this because she has a lot of information about practicing. And she talks about collecting images. Again, the Valerie Wells book has beautiful images in it. And she gives fantastic visuals of doing a feather and then bubbles and bubbles and then this curly cue, different motifs and fills. So we're just going to page through a little bit because she sets you up and you notice the gold color that I use because that, that actually looks very pretty. Um, golden colored fabric worked really well. She talks about different kinds of thread and the needles. There's a very clear um, understanding here about different types of batting. If we were in person, you'd be handing, handling the batting and I'd be passing it around. She has a discussion of tension and stitch length, and then we go through, here are her practice sandwiches, and we have practice sandwiches, and here she is set up with her practice sandwiches with these different samples, and she writes on them, which I will be doing in class, so you will have seen that, what thread I use, and top and bottom, and what size needle. Pause, and, pause for a second, please. Yeah. So it's not wanting to come into focus, but it's because the writing is tiny. But that black writing at the top of this beige square, which is uh, C, plate C, and this is on page 33. 33, shows how you can keep track of what you've been doing. Yes. Now there are bigger pictures. Again, a star motif. This is a little leaf and um, twig, and then here's some of the square, interlocking squares. And she goes on, for your practice, she goes on to teach you how to do these kind of curves. This isn't a real feather, it's, it's close. And then how to combine the two together, and it looks really, really elegant when it's combined. Pause. So this is a half feather, really. It goes up on as if it, you know, one it has side. one spine and one yes. side of feather on the spine. Yes. And this is, I don't know what you call that. That's just curly cues. And then that's the combination you're talking about where you've got the one spines with curly cues in between. Yes. Okay. Now, she has the sample pieces. This is, this is really fun. She's written her name. Does that come out well on the camera? Hang on. I'm trying to find the right... Uh, yeah, her name is very tiny in the center. You want to just right. um, put your thumb right... Yeah, there. Right. it's Jenny. There's her name, Jenny. Uh -huh. But you can see how she's used these different motifs around it in practicing. So that's a very, very good way to practice. And a cute little coaster or something. Yeah. That you could make. She has placemats that you can practice on, and, and the 
amount of fabric needed for the placemats. That's a great idea so because then you don't feel like you're wasting it. I hate to waste the fabric, so when I, it's very hard for me to sit down and just you know yes. waste a 12 inch square. But if you make a placemat, it's not the end of the world if you make a mistake, but you can use it. And she's telling you, we're going to go to that page in just a minute, but first, this the reason why this book is worth it is she talks to you about buying a panel mm -hmm. and making a quilt using a panel. So she has four different animals and she's showing what she did, radiating straight lines in this little one. And the quilting just made that. It, it did, it did, and she shows you what angle she used with a ruler. But the reason why I feel this book is worth it is look at the front of the bear and then look at the back of the bear. Mm -hmm. And you can see how she has made it, brought it alive. Mm -hmm. Because here are, your, here are your flowers of different kinds, and whatever motifs you're putting between them, bubbles. Now, and, and this is the back of the book. Here's her appendix of quilting motifs. So you can see daisies. She's telling you where to start and showing where she travels from one to the other. She is talking about little branches and shows the shell border where to start for that and how to go around and make that work. And the peacock feathers. Everything is numbered to make it easy to practice. And you will have your practice sandwiches that we're going to use in class. You'll have leftovers. So you can start practicing your fern, your bubble. And then she goes on to have something called orange peel and different wavy lines and feathers, wavy lines with flowers on them. And the author has a very good um, website and a blog, and she sends out tips about what she's learning and doing. So I find that extremely helpful. So that's that book. Now, this is the older version of Heirloom Machine Quilting. Diane Galdinsky is well known as a just exquisite quilter. And she has examples about setting up, having enough light, machine quilting needles and threads. And one of the easiest thing to remember, if it's a fat thread, use the fat needle. If it's the thin thread, use the thinner needle. That's just the easiest, easiest way to figure it out. She has free motion designs. She is talking about how to quilt a large quilt with a grid. And now here we are in her exquisite Quilting, she usually uses um, silk thread in the top and the bobbin. And she has examples of uh, a practice sample in quilt basting and talks about how to set up how to quilt a star and a lot of different different techniques, feathers, and more. She's marvelous. This is an article from Machine Quilting Magazine, which Machine Quilting Unlimited, which sadly is, is defunct now. It was a, oh, it got lost during COVID. Um, this is a quilt by Jill Curtula, and what I find so fascinating is the way that she uses all these different shapes. There's our bubble, and here's meandering, and she does a long arch, but then she decorates it with beads. Those are beads on there. Mm -hmm. She uses contrast stitching. She comes into the center of this flower, 
and again here's a square with a bead in it but every once in a while she gives it a little swirl and then if you come down and look at this rich rich flower just a myriad of different quilting stitches and and depth and technique and here is a bubble with a bead in the center so I find it extremely rich to look at her her quilting so um, and and she's using seed stitch by hand on this part of the quilt so she's got something for everybody so tell us about this article Annabelle well this is an article that highlights fiber artists at loose ends and we've been together as a group for probably 12 years and we had this idea of making very very delicate hanging and we called them wind chimes so many of them are made with silk or very very lightweight fabrics and the four elements are earth air, fire, and water, and our, <laughs> our resident engineer came up with this idea of hanging them from bicycle wheels, oh, so that when there is, that's so cool, when there, and, and these are fishing hooks and fishing lines, so it's incredibly up, lightweight, it's invisible, very lightweight and invisible, oh, wow. and then we have a fan blowing on them so that oh. there's a little bit of movement in it, uh -huh. and there are 10 artists, so each person has interpreted themselves, you know, what their vision of, of, of the water is and fire, and in the um, slideshow in in the Saturday presentation, you'll see my my set. It's just so we wonderful. did seasons and we did elements. It's just amazing. What creativity! It's it's been pretty awesome, and it's been to um, Mancuso and Fiber National, and it went to um, Houston. And they were also displayed at the Virginia Quilt Museum. So these were made in, in 2015 into 2016.